presentations. You can sit down for a lot of it just because it's hard for me to type and standing up. Uh, but this is all demos. This is called Stupid Solaris Tricks. Are you actually um, Solaris? Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is the best Solaris laptop platform, which is um, made and manufactured uh, by a company in Cupertino, uh, <laughs> which is actually, this is Solaris Developer Edition, like Build 73, on, um, so Nevada Build 73 on VMware on top of OS X. Because that way I actually get some power savings, which is something that Solaris doesn't have. And I don't go through having to check my file system when I'm trying to start my presentation. So, um, now, uh, as many of you know, uh, Sun hired me about a year and a half ago. Uh, prior to working for Sun, I was pretty much almost exclusively a Linux team. Uh, and making the transition to Solaris was kind of difficult. Anytime you make a transition to a new operating system or a new tool set, you're in the bad position of missing all the things that you used to have and not knowing about any of the new features that you didn't have on your previous platform. So you go through a lot of frustration due to the prejudice against documentation of any kind in the Solaris community. Um, <laughs> that frustration is rather extended for me in about a nine month period, but over that amount of time, I've actually started to learn about some nifty stuff in Solaris that I didn't have on Linux that's pretty cool and makes my life easier, particularly in a service, server environment for running PostgreSQL. So these are a few of these tricks. So the first thing that I learned about, because we had to get it set up in order to have so, uh, PostgreSQL built into Solaris and ship with Solaris and that sort of thing, is something called SMF. SMF stands for Service Management Framework or yeah. Service Manifest Framework or something else. Everybody just calls it SMF. And, uh, well, for those of you who are Linux geeks, you know, you manage services, that is, things that are going to be running on the system and get started and solved automatically through something called init scripts. And init scripts is a format and a methodology that was come up with in maybe 1988. Um, it's, it's old system five ways of looking at things. Red Hat sort of improved it through the, the, their syslinking system. But it's extremely awkward and painful. And I didn't realize how awkward and painful it was until I had something else. Um, and that something else in this case is Solaris' SMF. Oop. So, oh, I am in the wrong window. Hold on a minute. So this is the S SMF window. So the so SMF has a number of commands that all begin with SVC for service. Um, so and one of the simplest ones is listing all the services you have running in your system. Uh, one of the nice things about SMF commands is that they will match any portion of the service name. So I can just see what PostgreSQL services I have here. So these are the ones that are installed. As you can see, PostgreSQL is not running. Uh, it's disabled in both cases. And because uh, we've got the whole upgrade problem, we've currently got 8.1 and 8.2 on Solaris. Um, so that's easy enough. I could also, if I just wanted to see what was going on, if I just want to see what was going on with that one service, I could do just matching one portion of the name version A2. Um, and I can also start it that way. So that's all that it takes to start Postgres. Let me make sure it actually did start, because it tends to just log it if it doesn't start. Yeah, it's running. So there we are, Postgres is started. Uh, and it's that easy. Uh, right now, in the existing Solaris release, you still have to init DB Postgres before you can start it. But in the future, the new service management script that we lo loaded in there will also do that. So in the future, on Solaris, that's all that's going to be required for you to be up and running with Postgres. Um, is to just go ahead and enable the service, uh, which will be a nice install experience. Now, the, uh, the other really nice and fun thing. So now that I've actually got that running, let me show you a couple of other things. So one of the sort of frustrations that I encountered in moving from Linux is that a bunch of the command line utilities I was used to in Linux 
uh, either weren't present or worked differently. For example, um, <laughs> for example, PS actually worked kind of differently. Um, so if I did my usual command for looking at what Postgres is running on the system, um, that's what I get. Good for PS. It's actually reasonably similar, uh, except that it won't actually tell me what it's running. Um, however, if you want, um, however, if you want the PS you're used to in Linux, for the Solaris people who are old hands in the operating system, they regard that as UCB PS. Um, so it's actually under the user UCB directory. And you can get the same format that you are used to in Postgres, and you're used to in Linux for PS, and actually run some of your same scripts and have some idea. Because like one of the things that you notice with the the Solaris PS is that it actually doesn't tell you anything about system utilization, as opposed to the UCB PS, which does. Now there are actually other tools on Solaris that are designed to tell you. Um, about things like system utilization, like PR stat, which is actually not something that Linux has. Um, and I realized actually this is, so this is the version, the AM switch actually tells it to give me a whole bunch of stuff about system utilization and not so much stuff about other information, uh, including things like the top processes and how much CPU they're using, uh, as well as a whole bunch of information, uh, including several abbreviations I would need to look up uh, about uh, what the system is doing. And that's actually been a nice one for keeping track of what's going on on the system when I run Postgres. And I'll actually see some adaptations of PR stat in a minute. So, now, one of the things I'm going to show you here is one of the nice sort of side features of SMF. So that's part of a PR stat window you can see. That I'm just I'm using PR stat and I'm asking it just for the Postgres processes. That that's actually um, that's this command, PR stat. I just asked it for all the processes belonging to the Postgres user, uh, which is nice just for keeping track of what Postgres is doing in terms of using system resources. And the reason that I have them side by side there, you'll see in a minute. Um, first, let me fire up a. PG bench. Um, I don't know if I have defined my environment variable, so it's called the string. Okay, so I got PG bench running. So let's bring back up the other windows here. Now. I used to actually demonstrate this by running 8.20, because one of the people, so you can actually see some of the better information with the PG stack here, so we know what is getting fired up there and actually using some system resources. Uh, not a lot of memory, actually. So, I don't know doing that. Um, the, um, but one of the things you might remember about 8.20 is that it had this type conversion issue where if you did the wrong type conversion in an unprotected manner, you could actually crash the back end. And that was the reason for 8.21. Uh, now, I didn't actually recompile 8.20 for this, so I'm going to simulate having a similar back end crash simply by doing a p <laughs> um, And watch what SNF does. So these are the running Postgres processes. So if I do a p-kill Postgres, you see it shut down most of the Postgres processes. Postgres gets killed off. And then, SMF automatically restarts it. Now, obviously the session for, there we are. Obviously the session for PG Bench is going to be interrupted. As you can see that, because if you get a back end crash, we can't keep you from keeping the session interrupted. But it's an interesting little bit of protection against, um, an interesting little bit of protection against DOS attacks. So, more fun stuff on Solaris. Mm -hmm. So here's another, here's a much more useful one in general. 
So um, you guys have probably heard about uh, you guys have probably heard about zone sum. So for those of you who are not familiar with zones, uh, how many people actually are familiar with, with zones? Most of our folks. How many people are familiar with FreeBSD jails? Okay. So for those of you who know jails but not zones, zones are like a version 2.0 of jails. They're jails with better implementation and resource management and that sort of thing, which I'm going to show you. For those of you who don't know any of those things, what a zone is, is it's a contained copy of your operating system that runs in an artificial environment that when you're in the zone, it's like almost a virtual machine. Um, but from outside the zone, it can be managed with the rest of the operating system resources. Now, we're actually implementing a full virtual machine through something called LDOMS, but I think that only works on Spark hardware. Zones work everywhere. Um, so what I've done is I've all installed another copy of Postgres inside a zone, and I'm running, going to run, start up that, oh, am I in the zone? You're in the zone. <laughs> No, I was not inside the zone. So here we are. <laughs> so I'm going to log into the zone. Uh, I, I am still a Linux geek at heart, so I need my Bash shell instead of the, the 1991 shell that they supply us with. Is it 91? I thought it was still 72. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, um, so I log into this zone that I call PGZ, and I previously installed Postgres in the zone. Uh, and I'm running, um, and I'm running. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and now I already installed it and set it up inside the zone which I have to do again but I use the same service admin commands inside the zone but service admin knows to start the version inside the zone and not the one on the master machine. Hey Josh. Yeah? Did you run SVCS dash L on version A2 real quick? Yeah. Oh, right. This, I actually I forgot part of my SMF panel here. Uh, so SMF can also give you a lot more information about the services that you're running, uh, including where your log file is, um, which, which I mean, it gets automatically defaulted into this. There's a handy thing, actually, for Postgres users. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times when I've read PostgreSQL.com to figure out where the log was. Oh, yeah. Uh, All the time. Yeah. So, um, and also dependencies. Now, with Postgres, there aren't so many dependencies it's from a service standpoint. From a service standpoint, dependencies are just services that need to be started successfully before the service can start. So, for Postgres, all we have is the file system. Uh, for other services, there's much more. And this actually tells us, it shows us that it's enabled, that it's online, uh, where a log file is. So. Is that log file going to be able to handle redirected logs? Uh, Josh, or is it only standard error or standard system? Nope. Oh. That's the. Can you tell you're in the zone? Oh, the service meter can't start. There's no reason why I'm there. Oh, yep. Okay. Stop. 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 Ooh. Okay. So, I'm demonstrating something in SMF that I didn't mean to demonstrate, which is that it had some kind of a problem starting Postgres. So I'm going to shut it down again. Okay, it's very unhappy with version 8.2. Um, okay, I don't want to go that much in, in depth, so I might take a minute later on to fix that up. In the meantime, um, hmm. How do I demonstrate the rest of this without that working? Okay. Well, <clears throat> speaking of using the log information, mm -hmm. ah, okay, not in my buffer. Where am I? Here? What? That's very interesting. But it's not online. 
Is that from outside of Zoom? Oh, okay. That was taking a longer cut, so hold on. Can I actually connect? Whoa. I've never seen that error before. Okay. Well, I might be able to do that in a minute or not. Um, let's go into something else, which is annoying because that's the coolest demo of the set. Um, I will point out that I am running in a development version of Solaris. <laughs> Uh, another fun thing to do with SMF, actually, that I want to show you, uh, that's particularly something I do a lot as a Postgres developer, is one of the things that I have constantly with my machines is I have like eight different versions of Postgres running. And using init scripts, that's really a pain in the ass to manage if you want to have those all run when you restart the machine. Uh, with the service admin, it's really simple. I, all of the services are defined through XML files. Uh, which is annoying because I don't actually really like, I don't like XML at all, but uh, it does make it very easy because, for example, the PostgreSQL, which is actually application database PostgreSQL, single XML file called PostgreSQL, no matter how many instances you want to start. So <coughs> I previously put in, um, I previously put in a, 8.3 beta copy in there, um, which is uh, which is in already. I already created the files and init the beta on the system, so I wouldn't have to do that again. So once you've actually done the installation, this is all I have to do in terms of editing the XML files. So I just copy one of the existing services, change a couple of things. These variables tell it where to look for the log files, where to look for the data files, that sort of thing. Um, and then, well. Okay, so. I've shut it down. So I just import the new manifest. And then you can see already I have a profile for 8.3. Now I'm actually not going to start up 8.3 because I discovered an issue with 8.3 in Solaris Nevada in the process of setting up this demo. So it will in fact fail to start. Um, for reasons having nothing to do with the profile. So let me actually go back to our zone and see if shutting it down in the master actually helped things. Uh, that's because of doing VMware and suspend repeatedly. Um, that's the one drawback to this as a platform. Uh, There's no VMware tools. Uh, Instead of live demos. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, well, but this is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, well, in this case, I'm going to actually show you. Should at least give me more information. There's no oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Gotta love an arrow like that though. Not enough space. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, okay. Well, you know what? That's that, in fact, is part of the demo. When I created the zone, the, the whole purpose of this demo is that one of the problems that you have is if you're hosting data, several databases in the same server and you're hosting it for other people, one of the problems that's very difficult to deal with is if they have development code or the ability to run ad hoc queries or reporting tool against the database, you can't prevent them from running something which will cause, which will take, which will consume all the resources of the server. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who've been sysadmins for a long time, there's, there's a couple of you in here, you remember old mainframe days, you had resource management tools. We could say, I want to give this machine these three processors and this amount of RAM. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that Sun has spent the last five years doing is re-implementing that kind of control purely in software, um, which you can do through zones. And what I did here was I made the mistake of giving the zone only 10% of my existing memory, which was apparently not enough to start Postgres. And that Postgres is a pig. <laughs> so, I'm going to give it 20% of my memory. CPU cap or memory? Yeah, and these are shell scripts. I think the memory cap should be okay. Those are shell scripts. Uh, but the commands are not actually that complicated. Uh, what's the memory that we have? The original error is that it couldn't Yeah. So, that, that's, that's the actual command. It was just easier for me to run it in a shell script. So let's see if that actually clears us to start Postgres. Yeah, it's, it's more uh, space, not more virtual memory. Memory capacity, not CPU capacity. Oh, okay. Well then, we'll do the same thing here. So the zone has its own network. Ah, okay. Yeah, they're um, you, they're bridged, aren't they? 
Robert, are zones bridged on the network? They can be. Can they also? Okay. Okay, so let's see, it starts up now. That's a, That's a good sign. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my guess is that because the CPU capital stuff is experimental, uh, we've had this problem before where <coughs> too much monkeying with the capping has basically corrupted the zone. Uh, so, uh, the, yeah, this is, this is development code. This is a development version of Solaris Nevada. Uh, and it would take me longer than you guys want to wait to actually figure out what bought the port then. Uh, probably it's me hovering the zone. clue. What? It's me hovering the clue. Yeah, no, it's just, it would, it would take me like 20 or 30 minutes. I'm just getting to closer, out. you know? Yeah, it would take me 20 or 30 minutes to figure out what went wrong with the zone uh, that's preventing me from starting a post -growth. So, um, which is a shame because that was the coolest part of the demo, but I can't show it to you. It's the problem with running on experimental versions of operating systems. Yeah, it's constantly battling. Yeah. Um, question. Uh, the one stupid Solaris trick you didn't show us was how to make post source pass on. And I'm not being well, surprised. right. I know that would that wouldn't be that wouldn't fall into the hang of stupid tricks. That would fall into the hang. Probably a good trick. Actually. Thirty minute presentation and yeah. performance configuration under Solaris. So, okay. Well, sorry about that. Uh, I'm just Selena's gonna uh, bring up a map where, where we're going for everyone, right. so it's a little easier. Yeah. It's actually not that hard to get to, but uh, there's quite a few people who have not been to Portland before here. Uh, so let's make it useful. And like I said, remember we're all friends, all hands from across the street. Get a buddy. Okay. It's a hard crash. You are. I just crashed. I just crashed. Okay. Okay, we are here. Okay, for for anybody who's wondering, don't don't pull out your external display display or anything. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry. Cool. Okay, we are here, Sonoma man. We have mass transit. It goes here. Ten blocks and hang a left. Okay. Point being is you can jump a bus. They're free. They're coming every 20 minutes right now, 30 minutes right now. Take you down to Maine or Taylor, jump off, and walk to Eighth. Okay. Eighth is called Park. Oh right. Oh, now it's good point. Park blocks. <laughs> is that the new bus okay. route with the the fact that it's all torn up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is this is accurate yeah. right now. Yeah, that's yeah. so it's eight, eight and Taylor. Well, it's part. It's actually but eight, eight is called park. Eight yeah, is called park. And you can't Sorry. just park is like it's like ten blocks of the park with a couple of skyscrapers in the middle that aren't supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, literally, that's the block you originally knew was supposed to be this big long park. See, the park starts here and goes all the way down. But. Uh, Anyway, and then right, let's see, where's the, right here, it's right here is the, the match, right? Yeah, right here. It's the streetcar, and it'll go like around here. Yeah, the streetcar right here, which is also free, will drop you up on 10th all the way down there. What's the name of the place again? It's the Paramount Hotel Dragonfish Cafe. Okay, it is under, I think it's only under my name and command prompt. So if someone gets there before me and you don't see a lot of people going this way, this way, just 
should say, hey, where's the command prompt party? Or the postgres party? And one of those will work. Uh, no, 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 no,